Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In this video, I just want to talk through um, a, a possible finding. Um, effectively, what I've been doing recently is I've been working through some of the Unreal uh, sample project. Uh, so in this instance, I've got the crop out sample project. Um, and effectively, it's just to do some research really, just to see how Unreal puts games together and just see if there's features in there that uh, I might be interested in either learning myself or um, things that I'd like to add to sort of little projects that I, I work on. Um, so as I was working through it, um, as I was playing the game, sorry, um, one thing that I've been asked for in the past is like a grid based movement system. Um, and really I've not had um, sort of like an all in one decent way of doing that. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I don't have a solution for you in this video, but um, I might have the foundation of something that we can we can build on. Um, so, <clears throat> as I'm playing around in this little game, um, so all these little people are gathering resources. It's a, it's a neat little project. If you've not played this, I'd, I'd definitely download it and and have a little go. There's lots of stuff in here which is really nice. But um, what I notice is when we go to like build something. Um, I noticed like the, the, the trees like snap into a grid system and I was like, okay, that's nice. I'd like to know how they do that. Um, and that obviously made me want to look into the blueprints of, of how they make this sort of stepped um, system. Like how do they get it to, to, to stick to a grid system? So if we just close the game here, that made me then look into the um the core blueprints for the player just to see how this is handled and i obviously i was building something so i go to the build mode and i see here that um okay so once the item spawned we're going to get its location but we we put the location of the actor through this stepped position function so obviously the natural thing to do is to what makes that work and it's actually extremely simple in this case so they're taking the position of the actor as a vector, so it's x, y, and z coordinate. Um, they're then dividing it by what I assume is going to be what they consider um, a cell size. Um, once they divided where they are in the world by the cell size, they're rounding that up and then times in it back up by that cell size. Once it's rounded, so it's either going to be one times, two times, three times. Um, then knowing that they are on sort of like... Um, a level ground knowing that the ground is going to be like zero across the world they've reset the the z to zero and then spit that out as the new location which is actually a really simple way to limit stuff to sort of like a grid pattern so what i think we should do is we should borrow this let's let's just copy this little bit here which is extremely simple we're going to hit copy um I'm going to go back to the village, but I'm just going to create a new project and I'm just going to pick a top down project and I'm just going to call this one grid, uh, create that. And uh, let's just see if we can make the, um, the top down project, which is a click to move into a grid base click to move. Um, and then that could be the foundation of a grid based movement system project. So the top down template is now loaded. If we press play now, you can see no matter where I click, um, you know, my character wants to move to that exact clicked location. But if we could limit it to the center of all of these um, boxes without having to actually click in the center, that'd be really nice. So let's try and do that. So I'm going to pause this, um, so I'll stop this game, go down to the top down folder, go to blueprints. And if I remember rightly, everything's handled within the controller in this project. So let's just tag that to the top. Um, so here we've got our mouse and gamepad, and here's we've got touch. We're not going to use touch, so let's just get rid of that. Delete that. Um, so what we've got here is whenever we click, it's going to get a location underneath the mouse, which is going to be a vector. Um, if we've definitely hit something when we click, this branch becomes true. So this is if we have hit something true, set this location to our cached destination. We're then going to follow it 
and then later on we then move to that location. So if we can manipulate this cached location and sort of divide it by a cell size using the blueprint from the, the project, the crop out project, then maybe we can set up a cell system. So we need to put a function in here to convert this to a, a, a stepped one. Now what we can do, um, we can create a macro in here or you could make a global one using like a, a macro library and you can use that across any um, any blueprint but um, actually let's do that so um, in my content browser I'm just gonna right click go to blueprints go to blueprint macro library uh, select an actor I'm gonna call this BPM for blueprint macro underscore global macro uh, global macros I think would be better open that up and it's prompting me straight away for a name, so I'm just going to put stepped um, or grid. No, I think stepped is better. Stepped. I'll just follow their name. Stepped. Um, movement. Okay, so with our stepped movement, I'm going to take uh, at least uh, an input vector. So vector in. Oh, in. I'm going to change this to the type of vector and then at least a vector out as well. So stepped vec out. And because this is a macro library, um, we won't be able to have variables. So what I think we should do is maybe make another input and put cell size and change this one to a float. Um, yep, that'll do. So you can press paste now and the blueprint from the other one will will pop up. If you didn't, this is basically a, a divide node, two round nodes, two multiplies, and then a make vector. So you could easily recreate this, but I'm a little bit lazy and push for time. So let's just get on with it. So what we want to do is we want to divide our vector in by our cell size. So let's say our cell is going to be 100 by 100. So divide the vector that comes in by 100. This will be like 1, 2, 6, 10, whatever. Then we're going to do 10 times our cell size. So again, let's just drag it down here. I'm going to type in the word reroute and add a reroute node. That just basically gives you a fixed point here. We can make this nice and tidy. Um, I'm over explaining just for, for newer people. Um, I've had quite a few new people recently. Um, so we're then going to times our new rounded um, figure by our cell size. And then we're going to make that back into a vector. Now, notice that they've took, uh, they've removed the uh, Z from this. Um, in their example, they must have had a flat world everywhere. Um, so they've just reset it to zero. Um, if you want to keep that, you could get your vector in and break it, which I'm going to do. And I'm just going to take the Z and plug that straight into the last one. Uh, because that's not something that we're going to need to um, step and then plug our return value into our step vector out. Hit save. Let's go back to our player controller now. Let's just make a little bit of extra space. So let's just move this over here. Now I called that macro stepped movement. So if we type that in, stepped movement, you can see because we put it in a macro library that's global, uh, we can use this everywhere. So let's click on that. We need a vector in, so let's plug this into here. And we need a vector out, so let's plug that into that. So the only thing that's missing now is our cell size. If we leave this as zero, this won't actually work because you can't divide by zero. But let's just pick a cell size of 100. Let's hit compile and let's hit play. So now when I click, so if I click in the center here, I can see that it's going to the edge or the closest edge of this. So that already is a good indication that this is kind of 
cell based. However, if we wanted to use this grid floor as our sort of cell system, uh, this is not going to work. Now, if I set this to 50, if I set the cell size to 50, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to click here in the middle and then here on this point. What I think might be an easier way to do this, this is purely because this floor has a grid pattern on it and I don't think we're matching that grid pattern. What I think is going to be easier is if we actually move this um, this floor by, I think, 50 and 50. Let's just try that. So you can see now, no matter where I click, the clicks are always perfectly centered on a grid. Okay, so they're not on this bit. Oh, I know why. Because we moved the grid underneath it. So all of these assets now are no longer conforming to that grid system. Let's just move these into the grid to test my theory. Okay, so that's gridded now. So hopefully if we run over here now, We've got the grid system working everywhere. So, I really like that actually. So that means that this video is going to be posted. Now, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to build on this and see if I can make other assets in the game um, conform to the same system. Um, but for, for some of those who liked my right-click context menu video, um, there'll be a card above if you if you want to know what I'm on about. Um, a lot of people that are trying to make sort of like RuneScape based games, um, you might really like this. Because um, as we all know, RuneScape's got a grid system. And uh, this might be one step closer to getting that RuneScape feel. Uh, so if you want me to push on this, give me some comments, like the video, or subscribe if you want to see future videos on this. Um, but yeah, just let me know what you think, and I'll try and build on this. Let me know if you use it, uh, and if that helps you out. So, um, thank you very much, and see you in another video.